Do you know what water, air, and rocks all have in common? They are made of matter. Matter is something that takes up space. Now, you might be wondering why they all look so different if they are made of the same thing. But the truth is that everything around you is made of matter, just in different shapes and forms. Matter is made of tiny particles called atoms. Matter can be grouped into three main states, solid, liquid, or gas. To figure out which state of matter something is in, we need to examine its properties. A property is the way that something is that we can measure. The physical properties we will look at to determine state of matter are shape, mass, and volume. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Volume is how much space that matter takes up. Solids are easy to recognize. Rocks, apples, pencils, and plants are all examples of solid objects. A solid object has a definite shape that doesn't change when you move it or put it in a container. They also have a consistent mass and volume. This is because the atoms in a solid object are packed closely together so they do not move around. A solid will change shape only if forced, for instance, if it is broken or smashed. If you look around, you can find many examples of solid objects. Liquid is the next state of matter. Liquids have a definite volume and mass, but they do not have a definite shape. The atoms in liquid are still close together, but unlike the atoms in a solid, they can move around. This allows the matter in a liquid to flow. Because liquids don't have their own shape, they take their shape from their containers. The same amount of liquid may look very different in a glass and spilled on the floor. You can find examples of liquids around you too. Water, milk, and juice are just some of the liquids you might find. The third state of matter is gas. Gases have a definite mass, but they do not have a definite shape or volume. Like liquids, gases take the shape of their containers. Unlike liquids, gases will spread out to completely fill the container they are in. If a gas is not in a container, it will keep spreading out indefinitely. This is because the atoms in a gas are farther apart than atoms in a solid or a liquid, and so they can move freely. The air you breathe is an example of a gas. You might have noticed that you can't really see air. Often, gases are invisible, but they are still there. There are many different types of gases in the Earth's atmosphere, like oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, helium, and water vapor. Sometimes matter can change from one state to another. Water is a very good example of this. When water is frozen into ice, it is a solid. When it melts back into water, it is a liquid. When water evaporates into water vapor, it becomes a gas. Matter in all its states is everywhere. See if you can find solids, liquids, and gases around you. Today in our video series about the layers of the Earth, we're going to learn about the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the outer layer that surrounds the Earth. It is formed by gases that protect the planet from outer space dangers like solar flares or small objects flying in space. Oxygen, that is an essential element for life, is found in this layer. 
The atmosphere also helps to control the temperature of the planet. We would find it hard to survive without the atmosphere. The difference between day and night temperatures would be huge. Depending on how high we get, the composition of the atmosphere changes, dividing itself into five main layers. The troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and the exosphere. The troposphere is the layer closer to the surface of the Earth. It measures approximately 10 kilometers high. Clouds are found in the troposphere, and weather phenomena like wind, rain, or snow occur here as well. Air, that is much needed for life on the planet, is found in the troposphere. That's why we should make sure not to contaminate it. The stratosphere extends to an altitude of 10 to 50 kilometers above sea level. The ozone layer is part of the stratosphere, and it's very important because it protects our planet from harmful UV sunlight rays. The ozone layer is getting thinner and thinner as air pollution rises. Did you know that airplanes fly in the stratosphere to avoid turbulence? The mesosphere extends to an altitude of 50 to 85 kilometers above sea level. The mesosphere is the coldest layer of the atmosphere. Temperatures can drop down to 90 degrees Celsius, below zero. Shooting stars occur in the mesosphere. These are meteors that travel through space. As soon as they hit the mesosphere, they start burning up, leaving a tail behind them. The thermosphere extends to an altitude of 85 to 500 kilometers above sea level. This layer is the warmest of all five layers. Air temperature on the surface of the Earth is kept constant thanks to the thermosphere. In this layer, temperatures can rise to more than 2,000 degrees Celsius. The International Space Station orbits the Earth within the thermosphere. Impressive natural phenomena, like the northern and southern lights, occur in the thermosphere. The exosphere is the most distant layer from the Earth's surface. It extends to an altitude of approximately 500 to 10,000 kilometers above sea level. Air in the exosphere is very thin. There's nothing but hydrogen and helium there. This layer is our outermost limit with space and protects us from solar flares. Satellites orbit the Earth within the exosphere. These are the five layers of the atmosphere. Very interesting, right? You may not realize it, but from the moment you got out of bed today, to the point where you sat down to watch this video, you've essentially been swimming. Why? Because air is a fluid just like water. It has waves and eddies, it flows, and when you push air out of the way, it rushes around you into a wake. So why don't we notice it most of the time? We commonly think of air as empty space. But while one cubic centimeter of interstellar space, the volume in the tip of your pinky finger, contains roughly one atom, the same volume of air has about 10 quintillion molecules. If that sounds hard to wrap your head around, it happens to be about the same as the number of insects alive on the planet, all crawling, climbing, and flying over each other in an enormous, tightly packed swarm. When this swarm of molecules runs into things, it exerts a force, pressing against the boundaries of the fluid like water pressing against the glass of a bottle. This is known as air pressure. And while air is lighter than water, all those molecules still get pretty heavy, with the total air filling a typical school gym weighing about as much as an adult elephant. So when you walk into a gym, how come you're not immediately crushed by the elephant of air in the room? Well, first of all, because most of it is pressing on the floor and the walls, and the part that is pressing on you is pushed back by the pressure inside you. You see, the air, as well as the water and everything else that fills our bodies, exerts an amount of pressure equal to that of the air outside. Of course, this is no accident. It's precisely what allows us to survive in the normal atmosphere, and what makes it more difficult at high altitudes or deep water. And we normally don't feel the air pressing on us because it's generally uniform. So even though different amounts of air molecules are hitting you at different times, the swarm is so thick that all those little differences average out. What happens when air pressure isn't uniform? This means that the molecules are pushing harder in one region of air than another, driving the airflow from the higher pressure region to the lower. 
We feel this flow directly as wind, and the pressure systems that meteorologists are always going on about are responsible for other weather changes, from the mundane to the catastrophic. But differences in air pressure do more than just let us complain about the weather. They're the very reason we're alive. We breathe by lowering the pressure in our lungs, allowing air to rush in. So the next time you take a deep breath, think of the unfathomable number of air molecules you're commanding to move. We look up at the night sky to ponder the infinity of space. But unless you're watching this video from that deep space, there are more air molecules in and around your body than there are grains of sand in all the world's beaches and deserts, stars in the visible universe, or both of those numbers combined. The vastness of the universe is right in front of you and inside you.